afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the results of the Daisy Hardy Poetry Recital Competition in 2020. This year, uh, although the format has been somewhat different to previous years, we have found that the quality and the calibre of all the recitals that we've received have far surpassed anything we could have hoped for. So thank you, everybody who entered. Right, well, let's start with the junior school. Uh, along with my fellow judges, Mrs. Milner and Mrs. Jeeves, we've had considerable difficulty this year in deciding on winners. Everybody who entered, we felt was deserving of a prize. Such was the high quality of everybody who entered. But alas, we had to choose. And after bitter arguments and continual disagreements, we did. And we've given uh, a third, a second, and a first prize in each of the categories. So, first of all then, in years one to four, in third place, Betsy. In second place, Bertie. And in first place was Lara. Very well done indeed. In years four to six, in third place, Isabella Greenwood. In second place was Evie Hodgson. And in first place, Sky. Excellent, very well done. And now on to the senior school. Uh, we had a very good raft of entries this year, particularly in year eight, who surpassed themselves, so very well done. But thank you everybody who entered. And again, we have a first, second and third in the two age categories. So first of all then, years seven to eight. In third place is Megan. In second place, Harry. And first place was me. Well done. And finally, years nine and 10. In third place, we had Sunny. Well done, Sunny. And then a very, very tough decision to make here between first and second. And in the end, second place goes to Toby. And first place, Thomas. Fantastic. Thank you. And just to say again, thank you to everybody who entered. Thank you to all the parents at home for uh, helping, helping people learn lines, helping with videoing, helping with props, uh, animals appearing on screen, things like that. Absolutely fantastic. We're really, really proud of the work that our wonderful students have done this, this year. So thank you to everybody involved. Late and it's dark and everyone sleeps. Shh, shh, shh. Into our kitchen a small ghosty creeps. Shh, shh, shh. We hear knocking and raps and rattles and taps. And he whistles and yells and screeches and howls. So we pull up our covers over our heads and we 
we lock up our ears and we stay in our beds. The Small Ghosty by Barbara Irison. When it's late and it's dark and everyone sleeps. Into our kitchen a small ghosty creeps. We hear knocking and raps and then battles and taps. And then he clatters and clangs and he batters and bangs. And he whistles and yells and he screeches and howls. So we pull up our covers over our heads and we block up our ears and we stay in our beds. The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear. The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money, wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh lovely pussy, oh pussy my love, what a beautiful pussy you are. You are? You are? What a beautiful pussy you are. Puss said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Let us be married too long we have tarried, but what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bone trees grow. And there in a wood, a piggy wig stood with a ring on the end of his nose. His nose. His nose. With a ring on the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Pig said, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a rinsable spoon. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon. The moon. They danced by the light of the moon. My poem is Daddy Fell Into the Pond. Everyone grumbled, and the sky was grey. We had nothing to do and nothing to say. We were near the end of a dismal day, and there seemed to be nothing beyond. Then, Daddy fell into the pond. Everyone's face grew merry and bright, and Timothy danced to sheer delight. Give me a camera, quick, oh quick. He's crawling out of the duckweed. Click! And the gardener suddenly slapped his knee, and it doubled up, shaking silently, and the ducks all quacked as if they were daft, and it sounded like the old Drake laughed, as there wasn't a thing that didn't respond, when Daddy fell into the pond. The Witch by Mary Elizabeth Coleridge I have walked a great while over the snow, and I am not tall, nor strong. My clothes are wet, and my teeth are set, and the way was hard and long. I have wandered over the fruitful earth that I never came here before. Oh, lift me over the threshold, and let me in at the door. The cutting wind is a cruel foe, I dare not stand in its blast. My hands are stone, and my voice a groan, and the worst of death is past. I am but a little maiden still, my little white feet are sore. Oh, lift me over the threshold, and let me in at the door. Her voice was the voice that women have who plead for their heart's desire. She came, she came, and the quivering flame sunk and died in the fire. It never was lit again on my hearth, since I hurried across the floor. 
to lift her over the threshold and let her in at the door. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. I'm sorry I could not travel those and be the one traveller as long as I could and look down one as far as I could to where a bend in the yellow wood and then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and one it wear, though as for the pattern there, had one really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden the last. Oh, I kept another for another day. Yet knowing how ways had gone away, I doubted if I should ever come back. I should be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two were two roads diverged in woods, and I, I took the one that travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest. Of the night, what immortal hand could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand there sees the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of a heart? And when thy heart began to beat what dread hand and what dread feet when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears did he smile for his work to see did he who made lamb make thee tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night could frame by fearful symmetry. The Jabberwock by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig and his silvery toes did gyre and gimble in the wave, all mimsy with the borogoves and the lone rats outgrave. Beware the Jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jubjub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the mansome foe he sought. And rested he by the tongue tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, eyes aflame, came whiffling through the tongue wood. And burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade would snick a snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumping back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock, my son? Oh, come to my arms, my beamish boy. Callo, callay, oh, frabjous day. He chortled in his joy. Was brillig and the silvery toes did gyre and gimble in the wave, all mimsy with the borough groves and the lone rats outgrave. Our brains ache in the merciless ice east winds that nigh us. Wearied, we keep awake, because the night is silent. Low, drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Worried by silence, sentries whisper. Curious, nervous, but nothing happens. Watching, we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire, like twitching agate eyes of men among its brambles. Northward. Incessantly, the flickering gunnery rumbles, far off like a dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow. 
we only know what lasts. Rain soaks and clouds sag stormy. Dawn massing in the east, her melancholy army, arm, army attacks once more in ranks, on shivering ranks of grey. But nothing happens. Pale flakes with fingering stealth come feeling for our faces. We cringe in holes, back of forgotten dreams, and stare, snow-dazed, deep into grassier ditches. So we doze, sun-dozed, littered by blossoms, trickling where the blackbird fusses. Is it that we are dying? Slowly, our ghosts drag home, glimpsing, sunk, fires closed, with, cr with crusted, dark red jewels. Crickets jingle all there. For hours, the insient mice rejoice. The house is theirs, shutters and drawers, all closed. On us, the doors are closed. We turn back to our dying. Tonight, the forest will fasten on this mud and us, shivering many hands and puckering foreheads crisp. The burying party picks and shovels in shaking grasp, pause over half-known faces. All their eyes are iced. But nothing happens. Remains by Simon Armitage. On another occasion, we get sent out to tackle looters raiding a bank, and one of them legs it up the road, probably armed, possibly not. Well, myself and somebody else and somebody else are all of the same mind. So all three of us open fire, three of a kind, all letting fly. And I swear, I see every round as it rips through his life. I see broad daylight on the other side. So we've hit this looter a dozen times. And he's lying on the ground, sort of inside out, pain itself, the image of agony. One of my mates goes by and tosses his guts back into his body. Then he's carted off in the back of a lorry. End of story, except not really. His blood shadow stays on the street and out on patrol I walk right over it, week after week. Then I'm home on leave. But I blink, and he bursts again through the doors of the bank. Sleep. And he's probably armed, possibly not. Dream. And he's torn apart by a dozen rounds. And the drink and the drugs won't flush him out. He's here in my head, when I close my eyes. Dug in behind enemy lines, not left for dead in some distant, sun-stunned, sand-smothered land, or six feet under in desert sand, but near to the knuckle, here and now, his bloody life in my bloody hands. Exposure by Wilfred Owen Our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that knife us. Wearied we keep awake because the night is silent. Low drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Worried by silence, sentries whisper, curious, Nervous. When the 
this thing happens. Watching, we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire, like twitching agonies of men among its brambles. Northwards, incessantly, flickering gunnery rumbles, far off like a dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow. We only know war lasts, rain soaks, and clouds sag stormy. Dawn massing in the east, her melancholy army attacks once more in ranks on shivering ranks of grey. But nothing happens. Sudden successive flights of bullets streak the silence, less deadly than the air that shudders black with snow with sidelong flowing flakes that flock, pause, and renew. We watch them, wandering up and down the wind's nonchalance, but nothing happens. Pale flakes with fingering stealth come feeling for our faces. We cringe in holes back on forgotten dreams and stare snow dazed, deep into grassy ditches. So we drowse, sun dozed, littered with blossoms trickling where the blackbird fusses. Is it that we are dying? Slowly our ghosts drag home, glimpsing the sunk fires, closed with crusted dark red jaws. Crickets jingle there, for hours, the innocent mice rejoice. The house is theirs, shutters and doors all closed. On us, the doors are closed. We turn back to our dying. Since we believe not otherwise can kind fires burn. Now ever, suns smile true on child, or field, or fruit. For God's invincible spring, our love is made afraid. Therefore, not loath, we lie out here. Therefore, we're born. For love of God seems dying. Tonight, this frost will fasten on this mud and dust, shriveling many hands and puckering foreheads crisp. The burying party Picks and shovels in shaking grasp, pause over half-known faces. All their eyes are ice.